I can honestly say that upcoming Smash Bros. defined my junior year at high school. I'd wake up in the morning, look at my phone, and see Sakurai's pick of the day on Miiverse. I associated every major holiday during this time with the newcomer that I was revealed around. My greatest Christmas gift was Rosalina. Little Mac was my Valentine. Greninja got me through spring cleaning. I got my dream character Pac-Man for my birthday. And Captain Falcon helped me celebrate the independence of my country. I've been following it ever since the first trailer back in June 2013 and still continue to this day. And I feel like since I've dedicated so much time to this unreleased game, it would only be fitting to have my first countdown revolve around this game series. But what is there to talk about that hasn't already been said? Characters, stages, items, music, event matches. Actually, no one has really talked about those. Those various crazy situations the game puts you in. I mean seriously. Some of these get ridiculous. So much so that I just want to turn off my Wii and smash it instead from the frustration. It's almost like the game director enjoys messing with his or her fans. Oh, he must have had fun making these. Anyway, here are the top 10 Smash Bros event batches that I found to be cheap. An increasing order of frustration. No rules, really, only that they have to have personally frustrated me. Whether it is due to the ridiculous conditions one has to meet to beat it, or the extreme disadvantage one starts at. Or a combination of both. Also, no co-op events from Brawl, since the only friend who'd be able to play with me doesn't really know much about the game, so he'd probably be more of a burden in getting through all the events. Don't tell him I said that. Anyways, let's get on with the list. This first one actually isn't that hard gameplay wise. It's basically kill all the weak clones. Nothing new, nothing too rough. Difficulty stems from Sonic's lack of variety in his palette swaps. Just a swapped out colors for his bracelet and shoes, and a slightly different shade of blue. Things impossible to see in the heat of battle. This makes Sonic Boom and Chaotic Rumble are basically the same exact character, yourself included, where it is easy to get lost in the fray and be KO'd by the hedgehog you thought you were. All you have to differentiate yourself is the indicator above your head, which can be tough to keep track of, especially on smaller TVs. All in all, while this event isn't too much of an issue, it can cause some unneeded headache from focusing in on small moving objects. Thank Mobius that Sonic is actually getting at least one dramatically different costume change. Let's hope he gets a couple more, like his Sonic Adventure 2 gear or his Nathan Drake bandana. The Pokeball is one of the funnest Smash Bros items to use. You never know if the creature inside will ensure your victory, lob around uselessly, or somehow screw you over even more. Or if the Pokemon inside the ball could almost perfectly ensure your victory. That's the concept of the new Smash's Master Ball, but this was incepted all the way back in Melee, in the event Legendary Pokemon. Here, every Pokeball you throw will almost always contain a Legendary, and if not, a Wobbuffet. Which is still not too shabby if you have a chain of Legendary Pokemon going. The real problem is Jigglypuff, who with her fast speed, and the fact that she's not being ganged up by a bunch of giant wireframes, has the much greater advantage in getting to the Pokeballs before you. And this is where the hell starts. Before you know it, legendary attacks are coming to you at every conceivable direction, and there is very little you can do about it until either you get KO'd, or J-Puff gets an unlucky chain of wob effects. It gets... annoying to say the least, but all the frustration ends up being worth it when you are the one commanding the legendary Pokemon. That pink ball of evil is gonna regret ever touching my balls.
This is actually a sequel to a pretty cool event from Melee called Gargantuans, where you play as a huge Bowzilla fighting against King Donkey Kong atop skyscrapers. This event adds Charizard to the fray, but you don't play as any of the Grand Beasts. Instead, you play as the puny Rob, tasked with taking all three out. As you'd imagine, it's not easy. Pretty much any direct hit from these guys will send you flying, and most of the time, dying. All you can do is hide in a small corner of the stage, slowly bringing up the damage of the monsters, or hoping they will be taken out from the randomly spawning Chimera or Friendly Fire. It's doable, but very redundant, very fast. Let's hope the third entry in the event series brings it back to the beasts exclusively, while playing as a certain space pirate. I didn't even realize I made this number 7 when I first made this list. Anyway, now for the prequel for a pretty awesome event in Brawl, Dark Link Duel, which I think actually makes the inclusion of the stamina mode a worthwhile inclusion, emulating the 10th final battle from Zelda 2. Seven years on the other hand, it's basically someone traveling back through time and punching their past child self for doing something stupid. You play as a stupid child. Link is obviously a stronger version of Young Link, so any attempt to attack him head on will probably end with being curb stomped. I find the best strategy is to try to outsmart the AI by jumping along the bottom of the stage. It eventually worked for me, after 17 tries. This is the first of two ties on this list. They can pretty much be summed up in the same sentence. Gimmickly, Kaon Yoshis on a flying pirate ship. In the pirate airship, you have to defeat two Yoshis during a very short time frame when the pirate ship stage is thrown in the air by a tornado. If you KO them at any other time, they respawn with no damage. Obviously, trying to hold back leads to the Yoshis hitting you with all they have with no fear of repercussions. On the other hand, constantly attacking them can lead to a premature KO, and your controller ending up in the TV screen. It's a no-win situation! It basically depends on the right item at the right time to win. In Yoshi's Rainbow, you can KO the Yoshis whenever you want, but you have to do it in a specific color order, otherwise you fail. If any of the colored Yoshis die at the wrong time, you get an immediate failure. Even if the reason they died was the AI being suicidal. Oh, and you have to do it before the Rainbow Cruise stage loops, by the way. So slow and steady isn't an option. Hope you didn't replace your cracked TV yet, 